You're with Creative Tucson. We're here at the STEM Innovation Organization event. And I'm Ty Besh, and I know nothing about innovation. So let's just, can we just go talk to people? Let's just go. Okay. We've all seen the egg drop from the ladder. This has to be different because you're obviously at Innovators Workshop. How is it different? Uh, the main part of this activity is that it ch kind of challenges you about wh uh, what, it, what you have to build, what you have in front of you. Uh, you're given a task and then you're given a bunch of stuff to do it. Tell us something, you're gonna be asked this all day long. Yeah. Oh, what's your project? What, you're dropping eggs, that's cool. <laughs> what inspired you? Tell us something that you're not gonna tell anybody else oh, today. Boy. Something about you, like, it can be about innovation. What have you sure. innovated? What it, something about you that you only tell cool people like us, like rocket power people. Oh boy, man. Uh, well, I feel like innovation is definitely the, uh, the backbone of all of our society. Uh, Tucson is looking to kind of get ahead of everybody in innovation. Definitely when it comes to STEM, we really want to push uh, the Tucson STEM ecosystem uh, way ahead of everybody. All right, so we've interviewed one team, the Egg Drop, and I got to be honest, you guys, he's not coming out of his shell. And we got to get deeper with these guys. We're not just the news. We don't want to hear about STEM. And, oh, I'm gonna do, we want to hear better. Like, what about this made you really want to do it? What happened in your life to inspire you? So we have one down, like I said. We're going to go to the next team. We, we really hope we're going to break her out of her shell crack the egg, so to speak. So let's go over to team number three. And she has a green skirt on, or a dress. I feel like she's gonna do well. Let's go over there. I was really impressed um, with your table and the fact that you have a dress that matches the environment and your table. Um, you also have live plants on your table. Thank God, finally someone has live plants. Before we get into the deep, dark secrets of your innovation, what, what is this? What are you doing? So our group is trying to help um, promote sustainability to everybody, just awareness of what's going on. Even though people practice it, I've had people who already practice it, we're trying to have this develop an app that will give more open-mindedness to people with examples and ideas and how much more you can do, other than just putting your plastic bottle in the recycling bit. But isn't it kind of weird? Like, you have the, the red and green dots we saw earlier, and you're basically saying, like, be honest, how bad are you with our world? Like, how, how much are you destroying our world? That's what you're asking, right? Like, how much do you suck? Like, not like that, but like, <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. basically, it's just, that part is kind of like, uh, mentally for people, realize. Be honest with yourself. Like, don't be like, oh, I recycle, I do, I'm very eco-friendly. Don't worry about it. We're all in the same world. We all do that. Everybody has their work, their school, their kids. There's just so much going on in life that probably that's the last thing they're worried about. We have innovators all around this room. We've talked to them today. They're great people. They're showing you how to innovate. But what you're doing, and this is my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong, is you're making people responsible for their actions. And I think that's huge because you're like, look, Here's what we can do. Are you doing it? It's okay if you're not. Let's start doing it. And it might not be use uh, like a step-by-step -step innovation, but it's like, look, if we want to make a change, you first got to want to make a change and try to do it. So this is less of an, do you see this less of as, as an innovation or more of like an inspiration? I guess that would be both, actually. We're trying to inspire people to create new ideas on how they can be sustainable. And the way I've said it to people is that think of it as yourself you see your body and you're strong I can do this I can do that but you're also thinking as the time goes by you have to take care of yourself same thing with the earth the earth is strong it's been capable of doing so many things for us we're living here we're building so much technology and so many destructive things like pollution but it's still going strong so it's kind of doing at a time where just like us we need to start taking care of it so we can keep doing things that we want to. Yeah, and it's funny because we were just talking about the end of the world over there with that guy. And because uh, I was wondering, like, ground zero, like, is he just like, you know, the new world kind of thing is that he's pre preparing for? But yeah, so when the end of the world comes in like a month or whatever, um, you're going to be ready to make your own plants, have a sustainable plate. Is that what you're going to be? Are you ready for that? I'm not fully ready for it. <laughs> just like everybody else in this world, we're not ready for it. Okay, so hey, I think she wants to be in our video. Yeah, come in. It's fine. It's fine. You can. She's not gonna come in. Okay. So um, I don't know your role yet, but you look like you're very innovative. I can tell in your eyes. You have a lot of creativity. We want to help steer students towards STEM careers, STEM education. Why is innovation so important? I mean, aren't we all just supposed to be working on the factory line? Aren't we all just supposed to be 
making sandwiches. Why innovation? Why break out of that shell and be an innovator? That's a good question. I mean, obviously, obviously, everything that everything that we see around here is was once a, an innovation. Okay, so um, I'm a little bit taller than you, so I'm gonna go like this. What makes you different um, than other people? That makes you creative. What's your thing? Uh, my mom always tells me to like, don't just sit. That you can do whatever you want. You know, so. Do whatever you want. <laughs> nice. That's the perfect attitude. So what do you want to do next? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. But see, you have the tools to do whatever you want. Tell us something about you that you're not going to tell any news reporter out here, any person asking you about your project. What's something about you that you're proud of as a person? What makes you you? Um, it can't be math. About the projects? No, about you as a person. You are the project, so what's you? To do well in school and such, and I actually enjoy it a lot when I'm not stressed, of course. So you're gonna be one of those people that has like six graduate degrees, and you're gonna be like triple honors in math. Hopefully. <laughs> My math teacher at U of A, are you gonna go to U of A? Um, probably. Don't, because the math teacher there was terrible. I was over at that other table over there, and this kid, I was like, oh, what's this? And he had the straw with the little, pe like this, and he was like, oh, it's to pick your nose. I'm assuming it's not for that, but you're gonna have to clear it up now. What is this for? It's, it's just a project that the kids can do. It's um, something really interesting. It works with mechanics. Um, it's just the very basic uh, mechanics that they could do. I really love, like mechanics. I wanna be a mechanical engineer. My cruise control on my Ford, it's a 99. It doesn't work anymore. Is that something you could fix mechanically? Because like I press it and it doesn't, it's like the, mechan the electronics are. Science is mechanics. You need to incorporate math in your mechanics. You need to incorporate the technology. You need to move along with technology as well. All the new things that are coming out. Um, the engineering behind it, that's every aspect of STEM. Science, technology, engineering, math mathematics. Well, that's what STEM means. <laughs> okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. We didn't even know. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Um, speaking of science, you have these basketballs. No hoop, which is kind of sad. Tennis balls. No rackets. Why do you have those there? Basically, it's the, conf the conservation of energy. So it's like when there's a fat person on a trampoline and a skinny person, a really short one, and they double bounce him and the short kid goes flying. Transfer of energy. Exactly. So I love doing that. I was the fat one. We interviewed this guy over there. He's a great guy, the drop and eggs guy. Kind of, kind of seemed like tight. Tell us something about yourself that you're not going to tell anybody else here with a camera. Let's, what, like, get, let me get to know you. Like, tell me something that isn't like, I want to be a mechanical engineer. I can fix your cruise control. Like, tell me something about you. Um, I really want to make a difference with the, like, the kids. Sometimes kids don't, aren't exposed to those different careers. I guess that they just don't pursue it, really. That's fair. That's huge, and it is about the kids, I agree. I like that you're doing this. Obviously, this is a little lower than your, you know, your skill level, yeah. but I like that you're doing it for the kids because that, it's that spark. It's that STEM spark. Are right, you ready? All right, we're gonna try to run up on these kids. They have the egg droppers in their hand. Let's see if we can get an interview out of them because we want to hear from the kids the next generation. All right, let's go. Hey, guys, so are you, wait, are you cheating? Cheating. Yeah, what's this? No, we're no. doing oh. We're actually giving away for free the schematics so others can also learn. Wait, so this is what this is what made it. Giving forward. Who's the one that designed it? You or you? He, he designed it. You designed it? What about her? And who tested it? I did. Yeah. Okay, you tested and you just did you just watch? Yeah, she watched. She kept yeah. us on time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she kept us on time. She was doing time and yeah. what were you doing? Nothing. Making sure that aesthetically it looked good, right? <laughs> Yeah. So we've got to ask you, sir, what was the inspiration behind your design? I was actually looking at others and how they were doing it. And just looking at this, you can tell it's going to pop in the way to the egg. So it's like, we have to keep the egg from hitting the bottom. Yeah. So then we just cushioned the bottom because we know this is probably going to break. But if the rubber band will keep it in place, and this will more gimmicky than anything. I don't think it's slowing <laughs> it down, but yeah, it looks good. It looks great. No, and like, you are an inspiration to your kids. Oh, it's a lot of fun. They've been interacting all over these different places, yeah. so I'm glad these events are here. So which one, of, and you can, they're not listening, pick one of them. Which one of them is showing the most creativity in the house? Who's going to be the innovator? But, so she's the innovator, 
but he's very mechanical, so he can build, design, and put it together. And she's very, I mean, she's a leader. Yeah. So she could be the one going, nope, that's not gonna she's work. She's got the and, sucker, yeah. she's the director. So this is a great, <laughs> this is a great team right here. All right, so we talked to the five teams. Everybody is an innovator in their own right, and a person, as you saw, finally, as we broke the egg. Um, excited to see what these kids do in the future for Tucson and for themselves. And, <laughs> and this is Creative Tucson and Ty Besh. I am not an innovator. Thanks for watching, guys.